friend, so she don't need no man. Stay far from timid, only make moves when your heart's in it. And live the free sky. When I was young, I had two pair of leaves. Besides that, the pinstripes and the gray. Uh -huh. The one I wore on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh -huh. While niggas flirt, I'm throwing tigers on my shirt. And alligators, uh -huh. you wanna see the inside, huh? I see you later, here come the drama. Oh, that's that nigga with the fake. Uh -huh. Wow, why you punch me in my face? Stay in your place, play your position. Uh -huh. Here come my intuition. Uh -huh. Go in this nigga pocket, rob him while his friends watch it. That hoes clock it, uh -huh. here comes respect. Cruise your crew, or they might be next. Look at they man, I big man, they never try. So we roll with them, uh, stole with them. I mean, loyalty. Niggas bought me milks at lunch. The milks with chocolate, the cookies, all the crunch. 80 lunch. I was wrong, I got my point across. They depicted me the boss. Of course, my orange box cut to make the world go round. Plus, I'm fucking bitches at my homegirls now. Start stacking, dabbled in crap, gun packing. Nickname Medina made the scene as my Ninas. From gym class to in glass, pass all for global. The only nigga with a mobile. Can't you see like total? Getting larger and wasting taste. Ain't no telling where the spelling is heading. Just in case, keep a shell at the tip of your melon. Clear the space. Your brain was a terrible thing to waste. Enterprise and I ain't have to be in school by 10. I then began to encounter with my counter parts of how to burn the block apart. Break it down into sections. Drugs by these selections. Some use pipes, others use injections. Syringe sold separately. Frank the deputy. Quick to grab my Smith and Wesson like my dick was missing. To protect my position, I'll corner my layer while we out here. Say the hustler's prayer. If the game shakes me or breaks me, I hope it makes me a better man. Take a better stand. Put money in my mom's hand. Get my daughter this college plan so she don't need no man. Stay far from timid. Only
nigga never been as broke as me. I like that. When I was young, I had two pair of leaves. Besides that, the pinstripes and the gray. Uh -huh. The one I wore on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh -huh. While niggas flirt, I'm throwing tigers on my shirt and alligators. Uh -huh. You wanna see the inside? Huh? I see you later. They come the drama. Oh, that's that nigga with the fake. Uh -huh. Wow, why you punch me in my face? Stay in your place. Play your position. Uh -huh. It come my intuition. Uh -huh. Go in this nigga pocket. Rob him while his friends watch it. That hoes clock it. Uh -huh. Here comes respect. His crew's your crew, or they might be next. Look at they man eye. Big man, they never try. So we roll with them. Uh -huh. Stole with them. I mean loyalty. Niggas bought me milks at lunch. The milks with chocolate. The cookies, butter crunch. 80 lunch. God damn. Him. <sighs> man, man, oh man. Tonight, oops. tonight, man, how is everybody feeling, man? How is everybody feeling? Man, so, yeah, how's everybody doing? How is everybody doing, man? Um... This is your WrestleMania 40 Saturday night one, whatever you want to call it, official show review. What the fuck is going on, dude? What the fuck, dude? Maybe I should switch ports. Mm, yeah, probably try that. Give us one second, working on Sir K's camera. So, working on Sir K's camera real quick. I don't know why it keeps pausing, but it does. Cheesing, man. God damn, bro. All right, man. So. How is everybody doing? Sorry about the little camera blunder there. How, how the hell is everybody doing, man? How the hell is everybody doing, man? And welcome to the WrestleMania Saturday, the WrestleMania 40 Saturday official show review, man. Um, so this was, uh, to me, um, it was okay. It was, uh, it was like... It was okay. I would say it was kind of in the middle. Dare I... I'm not going to say mid, because when people say mid, people think, you know, you're saying it sucks. Mid. I mean, it's the middle. It's what it's supposed to be. Right. So, I've seen better night ones. Um, I have. I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen better night ones. This was one of the... Uh, this was one of the... Um, Weaker night ones, and that's not saying anything about this show being bad. I didn't think the show was bad at all. Uh, for um, for what it was, I enjoyed Becky versus Rhea. Uh, I enjoyed um, the tag team match, uh, and that to me, I told you guys yesterday, that could have went either way for me. I thought that was going to be a fucking clusterfuck, but it actually ended up being quite entertaining. 
Um, and then in the middle there, that show kind of took a turn, and it kind of mm-hmm. got, uh, it kind of sucked yeah. a little bit, and it kind of was a little boring um, at times. And then Sammy and Gunther, uh, wow. We'll, I mean, we'll get to it. And then the, the main event tag team match, I'm going to be honest, bro. The first, so that match went 44 minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you guys, bro. The first 15, 20 minutes, I was absolutely, uh, my eyes were getting heavy. Mm-hmm. Dare I say, my eyes were getting heavy. Um, it, it was it, it was not that good. And then something switched. And that shit, you know, I know I know the AEW professional wrestling lovers would pro- will probably hate that match with a passion. Oh yeah. But fucking dare I say that match was fucking wildly entertaining and it was very very good for what it was. I thought it was it was it was very it was very good and it was very enjoyable for what it was from my perspective. But what what did you think about night 1? About night 1, it 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 kind of happened for the most part um it started off pretty solid with that um that tag match was way better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, most of the middle of the show was kind of kind of just boring as fuck. Not even just because of the matches. I don't know if it was the acoustics or just the crowd itself, but they were making no noise tonight. Again, I don't know if it was the you know just the fact that it's an outside arena, so it's not like it could really like stay inside the noise. But like from from our perspective. They were making no fucking noise, man. Mm-hmm. So that definitely didn't help. But most of the middle of the show was just fucking boring as sin, dude. Um, but with that Gunther match, it picked up, man. That match was was fucking amazing. And then that main event, man. <laughs> it was so bad. It was phenomenal, dude. That shit was absolutely hilarious, bro. The Rock, he he he's still a legend. Solely. For how he believes in himself. I'll give him that, man. Because that man, man looked like me through the middle of the show, bro. Fucking how tired that man was and the shit they were fucking doing. Um, shit, was, uh, shit was good. It was a good-ass main event. Phenomenal match from Gunther and Sammy. Really great fucking tag match. But for the fucking re- um, rest of the um, show, probably the most boring uh, night one of WrestleMania, I remember, because it just, it was just boring as fuck for the most part, man, um, besides those, like, three standout matches. Definitely, yeah. The main event, like I said, man, like, the first, the opening, like, when they were in first gear, I would say, and the fucking Rock was probably still trying to get his fucking joints all warmed up, (laughs) bro, (laughs) Um, I, I was, I'm not gonna lie, bro, my, my eyes were kind of just getting heavy, dude, but like I said, like, the first, like, 15, uh, 15 type minutes of the match, I was not into it, I was not having fun at all, but then, like I said, dude, something switched, and then it just was a, a bunch of fun, it was, it was, it was, fun. it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, it was very entertaining, um, it, it was very entertaining for what it was, and, and, and I enjoyed it, um, so, that, that I liked a lot, that I liked a lot, but overall, overall, man, I did enjoy night one of, of, uh, of, of WrestleMania, I did, I did enjoy, um, uh, I did enjoy it, man, uh, like I said, I, 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 ha- I definitely have seen better night ones of WrestleMania, um, but, uh, overall, overall, I, I did, I did enjoy it, man, um, dude, that main event, bro, oh, that shit God, was hilarious, dog, dude, man. Watching Rock fucking every time this man laid eyes on a fucking bottle of water, fucking grabbed that shit like he was in the fucking desert, bro. Oh, dude, fucking just needing the fucking to cool off, dude, because the man was just fucking so gassed, bro. <laughs> oh man, dude, that one-on-one match with Roman is gonna be fucking horrible. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be so-, so bad, bro. I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be hilarious. Yes, it was. Uh, it was it was a boatload of fun. It was a boatload of fun. I, I really liked it. Um, once we got into once we got into the groove of things, uh, but without any further ado, how is everybody doing? And welcome back to another edition of the Notorious Hills Podcast, man. This is your WrestleMania Forty Night One Saturday again. 
Jesus, dude. What's going on? Change it again, or... Yeah, there we go. There we fucking go. Okay. Um, God damn. Yeah, so without any further ado, man, what's going on? Welcome to your WrestleMania Saturday official show review and another edition of the Notorious Hills Podcast. Man, if this is your first time watching, guys, do not know who we are or how the show works, rather, here at the Notorious Hills Podcast. Every Monday, we are live with Notorious Unscripted. Every Friday, we are on here with the news and every big pay-per-view for WWE and AEW. We are live Directly after the show goes off the air, man. So, yes, if you guys did miss this past Friday's edition of the news, or yesterday's edition of the news, it's not available yet. It should be available. Uh, probably like Mondays, usually. I should have the whole weekend shows up for you guys, man. So, if you guys also have not got a chance to get your hands on the hottest merch in the IWC, you guys can head over to bonfire.com. Link is at the top of the description of this very video. Where you can get all eight of these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful designs you see on your very screen. And more available. Again, that is bonfire.com. Link is at the top of the description of this very video. To get the hottest, most beautiful merch in all of the IWC, man. So, with that, if this is your first time watching and you guys do not know who we are here at the Notorious Hills Podcast. I am Johnny Mayhem, one half of the host of this very show. And as for the other half, we got my man Sir Kane here. How the hell are you, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good, Mania Weekend. Obviously, it's finally here, man. Um, and I'm, I was excited, man. And I'm still excited. It has been a great two days so far. I can't wait for tomorrow and Monday. But um, it's been good so far, dude. It's been really good. Fun-ass day today. Um, it's going to be real fun tomorrow. And fun-ass weekend so far, man. So I'm definitely doing good. Like Durante always ask, how's life? How's the family? Life's good. The family's good. How is everybody doing in the live chat tonight, man? Durante, Logan, Call of Zombies, Man Ray, Gotti. How are all you guys doing? How's anybody doing in the replay? What about you, bro? How are you doing? Yeah, man. Yeah, doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Always, always a good weekend. Always got, always a good weekend, bro. As you guys know, we did celebrate four years of the podcast yesterday, so we had that episode, man, and then that just goes right into WrestleMania uh, week um, this year. So, always, always a fun time. So. That was that, man. So, other than that, bro, doing good, doing good. Um, otherwise, as Durante always asks, I'm good. Family's good. What about you, Durante? Logan, Bell, Gotti, Call of Zombies, Man Ray. How the hell are you guys doing, man? And thank you guys for being here. And thank you, thank you for the very, very kind words in the open to the show, Durante. I appreciate you, bro. Truly, um, man. So, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said... Very, very enjoyable, very enjoyable show of WrestleMania Night 1, uh, for sure. Uh, like I said, like I said, just being honest, I definitely think, you know, there have been better Night 1s, uh, but still enjoyable nonetheless. But, I don't know, beginning and end were great, mm -hmm. the middle, ooh, it rough. Was pretty rough, I can't fucking lie. That's, that's... That's good, Logan. That's, better, That's good. I, I was just telling him this yesterday, <laughs> but if there's anything I hate in this world, <laughs> it is getting sick around WrestleMania time. I'll never forget my first uh, WrestleMania uh, back from not watching the product because I stopped watching in 2015 around that around that time period. So. 
I hadn't, uh, I had like 2014 and 15, um, started back watching in 2016. Um, uh, yes. Hi pops. How's uh -huh. it going? How you doing? I apologize. Not bad. Um, so started back watching in 20, 2016 and you know, I was, uh, you know, I hadn't watched a WrestleMania since WrestleMania 29 and man, I'll never forget, dude, first Mania back. It was WrestleMania 33, and I fucking got sick the fucking weekend of the show. <laughs> and I will never... It's been a personal mission of mine ever since then to not get sick for WrestleMania ever again because I hate feeling like shit when it's... This is our Super Bowl. It you really know? is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's horrible. It is fucking horrible, man. I, I hate it. I hate nothing more than getting sick during WrestleMania time. So, I understand. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, as, for, like I said, man, I definitely think there's been, there have been better night ones for sure, bro. But still, I don't want that to, uh, I don't want to take anything away from what this night one was. It just... They should have uh, placed the card better. Definitely. Definitely. You, know, you can't have two things that are enjoyable in the beginning and then have matches three, four, and five be just kind of nothing matches, just kind of, you know, just their matches. Um, because, yes, your show will take a hit. Right? Oh, I really will. Your show will take a hit when you, you know, let your audience kind of sit there and bored them for like an hour and a half. Um, yeah, that really sucks for Becky, man. Damn. Yeah, I found out I found out about that in the middle of the show that she was dealing with a sickness. I think I saw that this morning when I got up. Whew. Fuck, dude. That sucks, man. That's horrible. Again, my point. I hate being sick around WrestleMania time, so... I can only imagine. Um, but, but, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, thank you. It's been an awesome four years. <laughs> they were really spamming this super kick button, bro. They just fucking replaced every fucking move in their moveset with that super kick. You know, to give the young buck shit. Yeah, seriously. I seen this fucking guy on TikTok that makes uh, wrestling TikTok content. He was talking about you can't mention the Usos and the Young Bucks in the same conversation. You can't. They're both like the goats in what they do. They're both the best fucking tag teams in their companies. Easily. And they're both two of the best tag teams ever. Yeah, exactly. The fuck. The fuck. I don't get it. I don't know, man. It's weird, man. Yeah, the match could have been a lot better than what they gave us. Mm -hmm. A lot better. Yeah, I thought they were. I thought they were gonna tear it down, but it, it almost goes back to uh, what Brett had said about his match with Owen. You know, he was saying their match at WrestleMania was okay, but their because you know they were saving the match until WrestleMania, so. Their match, he was saying, you know, our match at WrestleMania was okay, but after that, you know, they go on their European tour, and all the matches of that tour, he said, were, like, significantly, like, head and shoulders above what they did at Mania, because they were able to get that chemistry. Exactly. You know, so. That, that is very true, Logan. They have the exact same move set, so. It's like fucking hitting two fucking Triple H's in a fucking 2K match. You know what I mean? It's not going to, you're going to get, not going to get a whole lot of, you know, variety and, you know, going off of each other. Definitely. It sucks, man. Definitely. You know, that, that was why, that, that was why, um, I always looked at the possibility with Jimmy and Jay of, as, uh, doing a trilogy. Yeah. So by the time we get to WrestleMania, they actually have they like had, some chemistry and they know how to work with each other i think that would have been a much better way to go about this to be honest because i think that would have really let them you know figure a flow out with each other for sure for sure so so yeah man i don't know but to open this wrestlemania 40 night one we got rhea ripley 
uh, defending the uh, world, uh, Women's World Championship against Becky Lynch. Um, Becky came out to, like, some CGI... Uh, well, actually, no, before we even get to this match... Uh, there was something else that opened the show. Triple H came out there. Oh, Lark. Triple H came out there and talked about how this was the first WrestleMania of the new era. Mm. Um, in other words, Vince does not have a secret gorilla position this year. <laughs> Literally. Um, so, that was the open to the show. Triple H coming out there and, I guess, just... Letting everybody know Vince doesn't have his secret gorilla position um, like he did last year. And I guess to just let everybody know that, you know, we're in a new era. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it was it was interesting. It's great to see. And it really does feel like a new era, man. Him coming out to say that. Um, it really just solidifies. This whole weekend is just solidifying Triple H's reign, man. From Paul Heyman to this. It's really, it's really great to see. For sure. So now the first match, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch came out to um like a CGI of her uh book. Yeah. And it was like highlighted quotes from her dad and it was highlighted quotes from like the adrenaline that she gets coming through the curtain. Um so that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool and then she made her entrance. Uh she had an attire based off her book. Um so, Rhea then came out and was sung to the ring by Motionless in White, uh, singing, you know, her song, This Is My Brutality. Um, and, uh, th this was hard. Uh, I, I loved, I, I loved, uh, I, I loved this entrance. Um, I, I thought it was an awesome, uh, live performance, so I, I loved it. Dude, I did, bro. That shit was hilarious. That man was marking out for Rhea Ripley, bro. He was doing the whole entrance with her. He was barely even singing the song. He was so fucking excited. Yeah. This shit was great. Um, I thought that shit was great. That shit was fucking awesome. We expected it, and we got it, and it fucking delivered, bro. Sick-ass entrance. For sure. For sure, man. Um, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, that was the, um... That was the entrances. The entrances were very good. As for the match, uh, Rhea, Rhea's match, I will say, I don't think this was as, I don't think this was better than her match with Charlotte, uh, from last year, because I really liked that match. That was, that's just, and that's an all-time WWE women's match. If you want to put that up there, I do not argue with you whatsoever. Um, that was amazing last year. Uh, but still, uh, for um, for what we got of this, this was very good. I like this match. Um, I like this match a lot. Uh, it was it was um, sort of what what I what I expected. It was sort of what I expected out out of these two. Um, just a very um, a, a very. Very good match. Very good match. I I I like this one. <laughs> I like this one. I, I I like this one a lot. I did. Um. Uh. What What did you think of this one, bro? Yeah, man. I thought it was a good match. Um. It was. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't nothing special. But it was a good match. It did its job, man. Um. And I thought it was a pretty pretty solid match that did its job, man. Rhea Ripley won in the end, which was the good decision, the right decision. And I'm um, glad we get to see what moves forward with Rhea Ripley, man. thought it was just a good match. One of the better ones on the show, definitely. For sure. So, uh, Becky went to do the manhandle slam off the top. Uh, off the top and Rhea Ripley uh, gave her a riptide um, onto the turnbuckle. And then a riptide in the middle of the ring. And that sealed the deal for Becky Lynch. And Rhea Ripley holds on to the championship as she should have. She should have never dropped the title here, and I'm glad that she did not because that would have been absolutely ridiculous. Um, but but I did enjoy um, I did enjoy nonetheless uh, Rhea Ripley um, retaining. Um, I, like I said, I, I think that was uh, that was the only that was the only call they could have made. Uh, there was no reason 
you know, for Becky to win, and I'm glad that she did not. So I honestly think this feud's going to continue. More than likely, to be honest. The way that ended, I think it's still going to go on through the next couple pay-per-views. Definitely. But nonetheless, very good match, and I did enjoy it. So, oh, man, dude, before we get to the next match, bro, they did a little uh, tribute on this show for Wyndham. They did a tribute for Bray. Um, everybody had their fireflies up. And, bro, last night, me and Sir K mm -hmm. uh, watched Becoming Immortal, Bray Wyatt. Whew, man. Um, it was so good, I want to watch it again. <laughs> Uh, but it was also so sad, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I think I gotta wait a little bit before I watch it again, man. I kinda For gotta sure. let it... I kinda gotta accept everything that happened before I watch it again, man. Because, again, it still really doesn't feel real to me, man. Um, like Sammy was even saying in the documentary, like, you feel like he's just... You're waiting for him to come back on TV, man. Um, it really still hasn't hit for me yet. But um, that was an amazing documentary, man. You learned so much. Um, seen a crazy size of him, man, I thought I'd ever see. And it was genuinely, like, the saddest fucking thing in the world, man. My fucking favorite. We lost him, man. It's, it's, it's horrible to see, man. It really is. It really is. He was, uh... He was amazing, man. He was fucking amazing. He was one of the best... I've said it for years, man. My favorite character to ever do it. In my opinion, the greatest character to ever do it. Um, and I know a lot of people might disagree with that because of, you know, his the creative blunders he had in WWE. Um, but, man, I... I it, it, was, it, was, it was really peeling back the curtain on who Wyndham was and telling his story, bro. And just all the stuff in there, man... Uh, just about um, all the stuff in there, man. Just seeing like how much he hated the burnt fiend, and like seeing him mad. You know, I never thought you know I'd see the, you know that side of him, and then seeing um, seeing him like cry oh. uh, when they were talking about you know Brody is just a that hit me, man. That hit me because you know it, I just. It was just it was just weird to just see him like that. But Sammy, you know, was was saying in the doc, like Sir Kay said, that you know there's like a little part of him that's like still in denial about everything. And then Triple H was saying too, it it kind of just it kind of just feels like uh, it kind of just feels like we haven't seen him in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then fucking by God, bro, um, Bo. <sighs> Bo in in that in that uh in in that documentary man um Bo in that and them just talking about the day it happened oh. like man I mean it's just your heart just really goes out to them and man like we're I don't know I'm always always gonna miss always gonna miss Wyndham um, I'm always gonna miss just seeing his level of creativity and. That's why I preached so much when Wyndham was here for like fans to appreciate him because they weren't the best at it. No, they were horrible at it. Um, and then just like that, he's gone, and it's just it's horrible. But it was a fucking beautiful, beautiful uh, documentary. I absolutely loved it. Uh, cried like a fucking baby. Oh, I'm um, telling you, man. Cried like a baby, bro. So it was, it was, it was a, it was a rough night, but it was just so, so it was just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful, and you know, I just kept thinking about you know being there, you know, hopefully being there next year, man, when he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, just to be a part of that crowd and get to hold up the Firefly, bro, like it. I just kept thinking about that, and it's just, it's so sad. It's so sad, and 
it's especially sad when you look at like shows like WrestleMania 40. And mm-hmm. for me, I just say to myself, like, man, I, 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 I know, I know, Wyndham would have been on this show, you know, and that sucks that he's not because he should be. Um, I'm telling you, man, it was just. It everything just sucks about it, man, and it's, it was literally just the saddest thing in the world. It was horrible, but he's an absolute legend, and we mm-hmm. will never forget him. Truly. Um. So yeah, man. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, people... And and see, that was the whole thing with the Bray situation. Um, that was the whole thing with, with, with the Bray situation that, that, I, that I fucking hated is... When he got hurt, or yeah, when he got hurt, uh, and he went away for medical problems, everybody wanted to get in their bag of, you know, I know this and I know that, and everybody immediately was... He's not injured. He wrestled one match, not taking into account that he was working house shows. And medical problems can just go wrong. It just happen. They, they, it doesn't have to, you don't, uh, just because you're a wrestler doesn't mean any sort of medical problem has to be in the fucking ring. Literally. So everybody, you know, wants to put their fucking doctor cap on and, and, and go into all these, all their conspiracy theories. And I said it then. It's like... When Keith Lee got hurt with his medical problems, nobody, we, we, nobody knew. Yeah. Nobody knew. So I stressed and I stressed and I stressed. You don't know shit. Cause we don't. No, exactly. This is Wyndham's health. And the only fucking business, uh, the only person whose business that is, is Wyndham and his family. Um, so I stressed so much, bro, of just... You know, everybody stopped jumping to conclusions, and you don't know shit. And, um, you know, and then it just hurt so much because it was around the time, dude, we ran a story that they were saying that he was getting ready to come back. Yeah. You know, he was getting ready to come back, and then that bombshell yeah. just got fucking dropped on us all in weekend and just broke everybody's hearts. Um, but. I'm glad he doc- got the documentary, and I really hope next year he goes into the Hall of Fame, and I want to be there for it. So, uh, it's going to be sad, but I would like to be there for Bray, because he is on my Mount Rushmore, so he's he's the man. Truly, man, I really hope we get to see it next year live, and um, I just hope we get there to experience and just remember him, man. I really hope it is next year. Yeah, definitely. What a what an what an all timer, bro. Mm-hmm. Truly. So that was that. Thought I'd share that with you guys. Our experience of uh, becoming immortal, the Bray Wyatt documentary. So, with that, the next match was the tag team ladder match: the New Day versus Judgment Day versus DIY versus New Catch Republic. <laughs> Versus Excuse Awesome me. Truth versus A Town Down Under. Ugh. They absolutely blatantly gave away the tag team championship situation. Oh yeah. Um. They blatantly gave away the the tag team championship situation, man. Um. They had the tag titles. Basically on separate sides of the ring. Oh, literally. They were literally five feet apart. So, right then and there, I said, okay, one team's getting one, and another team's getting the other. I highly doubted that one team was going to get both sets of tag belts. No. Um, and that's not what happened. As for this match, because there was 12 guys in it, I thought this was going to be an absolute clusterfuck. Oh, I thought it was going to be an absolute shit show, man. Uh, but what it ended up being was actually a pretty enjoyable tag team match. Um, Gargano absolutely showed out as 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 he does. He's just that dude. Um, you know it. Tyler Bate had a really good showing. Um, Tyler Bate had a really good showing. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Oh, wow. Damn. That sucks. Roman Reigns reveals... 
oral chemotherapy. And my phone shuts off. Um, Roman Reigns reveals ongoing oral chemotherapy treatment for leukemia. Dang. Jesus. That's horrible, man. Roman Reigns kicks reporter out of WrestleMania 40 Saturday press conference. That's fucking hilarious. I wonder if it was Nick Hausman. Um, so, anyways, um, DIY as a whole had a really good showing. Johnny Gargano with that, uh, DDT spot was great. Um, Tommaso Ciampa with the, uh, white noise or the, yeah, white noise off the ladder, um, was great. Our truth doing his fucking John Cena spots was always fantastic. Tyler Bate doing the airplane spin while Finn Balor was holding a ladder was pretty dope. Um, Kofi Kingston had the pretty cool, uh, you know, dive onto every competitor in the match spot. Um, dude, first and foremost, oh, um, Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley went 17 minutes and five seconds. By the way, just thought I'd throw that out there. Um. Also, dude, I am so fucking glad the tag team championships are finally off of the fucking Judgment Day. And they're split. Thank God, man. Now, SmackDown didn't get some great champs, but at least they got their own titles back again, man. Thank God. Definitely. I am so glad they are off of the Judgment Day, and I am glad we are back to... Having separate champions instead of... And and I know a lot of people like the floating concept. Nah. I... For me, they didn't really do much floating. They, no, there was no floating. There was floating when it was the Usos because, because of Roman. Oh, with the Judgment Day, absolutely none of it. Never seen them on SmackDown. No, literally. you never seen them on SmackDown. So now that we're back to having two separate tag team championships, I would really like to see, you know, some different designs. Definitely. I hope so. I think so. If they change the women's and they change the singles, man, I think they'll change the tag. I think so. I think so. So, um, yeah. So, yes. Very good. This was a very good match. Um... Similar to the main event, just a boatload of fun. It really was. Um, Grayson Waller, well, there's a spot in the match where R-Truth and, or the Awesome Truth and DIY um, are about to, they're facing off and then Gargano tells R-Truth, how about you guys get those ones and we get these ones. So they go up to climb A-Town Down Under comes in, knock both of the teams off, and they climb the ladder of the SmackDown tag titles, and they take them off the hook. They take them off the hook. So Samantha Irvin announces the winners of the SmackDown Tag Team Championships Mm -hmm. are Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. And right after this, the New Day powerbomb Austin Theory through the bridge ladder, and we did not see another fucking lick of them in this no, match. They were just gone the rest of the match. They got their own title, and they must have just dipped after that spot because we never saw them after that. No, we did not. Um, yeah, we did not see them at all after that. Um, there was then a spot where R Truth was going to get the championships, and JD. McDonut comes out there um, and he knocks our truth off and he's trying to help Finn go up the ladder and the Miz breaks it up and then or sorry the the new day break it up and they get co or they get Finn off the ladder and they push JD uh, off onto two tables um, and Damian Priest then came in and started attacking the New Day, gave, um, took him out, gave him, gave Kofi a razor's edge onto a chair, and gave him a razor's edge onto a chair, and then our truth in the end, uh, knocks Damian Priest off of the ladder, and 
uh, grabs, goes up and grabs the Raw Tag Team Championships, man. So Damian Priest, um, Damian Priest and Finn Balor are no longer the Tag Team Champions, and I am so fucking glad. This I'm not gonna lie, bro. This ju- like Rhea Ripley's still like on fire, bro, but yeah. like the rest of the group, well. Really, just the Finn and Damien side of it are just fucking just just not lame. it, dude. No. Yes. They were just lame as shit recently, man. I'm glad they lost Styles, dude. Um, our truth, um, well, awesome truth. We all predicted it. It happened. And I'm happy, man. I'm happy it's off the judgment day, and I can't wait to actually get these tag team divisions, like, moving and rolling again. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely, bro. So, the winners of the Raw Tag Team Championships are the Awesome Truth, and the winners of the SmackDown Tag Team Championships are A Town Down Under. Bro, you couldn't have went with fucking Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate for your SmackDown team? Like, A Town Down Under? <sighs> Grayson Waller and fucking Austin Theory blow. I'm Dude, sorry, man. Listen, I don't really like um, Grayson Waller. In general, I don't see much in him genuinely. And I like Austin Theory as a baby face, but as a heel, bro, it just does not work for me at all. It doesn't work for me, brother. And um, it just, uh, I really just don't think he's good as a heel, man. I, I just don't think he has it as a heel, not yet at least. Um, I really hope to see him baby face soon. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't work for me, brother. Come on. Hmm? A little weasel crew. Huh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yes, but this match lasted 17 minutes and 25 seconds. And what was? I am very glad to be eating my words because this was awesome. It really was. This was awesome. I liked liked this liked this tag team match a lot. I, I did. I, I did. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Um, so... With the next match, what was supposed to be mm-hmm. Ray and uh, Ray and Dragon Lee versus uh, Santos and Dominic turned into Ray and Andrade versus Santos and Dirty Dom. Um, this match was all right. Yeah. This match was alright. It didn't didn't really do much. I also just kinda don't understand what we did here. Is Ray just burying his son or something? Like Ray So Ray I don't get what this accomplished for anybody. What was the point of it after tonight? So I, I wasn't able to catch SmackDown, so maybe you guys can fill me in. Wasn't Andr- aren't weren't Andrade and Dominic cool? I thought they were. I really thought they were from the clips I've seen and like the interactions I've seen. So I don't know what's going on here, man. I really don't understand this. Yeah, I I, I didn't I, I don't understand either. I um I did not understand it either. Uh like I said, man, I the last time I checked the last time I checked, I, I thought Ray and I thought Ray and Dominic were er um, I thought uh, Andrade and Dominic were like friends. I thought they were friends, um, but apparently not. Um, uh, yeah, apparently, apparently they aren't. Apparently they aren't, and I don't know what happened here. I, I don't know what happened here. Went. But this match was okay for yeah. what it was. Um, so, yeah, because I, I seen Andrade hug Zelina Vega, so. Attacked Ray, and Dom got mad Andrade didn't help. Okay, well, that all makes right. a little more sense. That's all right. But... That makes a little more, at least it's something, but. Yeah, at least uh, an explanation. This match was okay, like I said. Uh, it was kind of just, you know. Joaquin did his spot, and, you know, it it was kind of just what it was. And then Dom grabbed a chair, and then two two guys in fucking Rey Mysterio masks jumped the barricade, 
And when one of my buddies, my boy Man Ray, oh my God. just yells out, Oh my God, it's the Dark Order. <laughs> and everybody just started fucking dying in our living room, bro. So it was it, it was very, very funny. It, it was, was very funny. Dude. But two guys in luchador masks come out, hop the barricade, and it ends up being Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. I want to say his name was. So, um, I, I don't know who Lane Johnson plays for or whatever his name was. It could be wrong. Uh, but I, I do know Jason Kelsey plays for the Eagles. So, you know, uh. I'm assuming that's, you know, why they got him. Um, uh, okay. I don't know, really know why they interfered with this match of all. Yeah. Matches. I don't. I, I I, I didn't quite understand. I, I didn't quite understand why it was. I didn't quite understand why. Again, like Sir K said, why it was this match. But they they came in, and it just helped. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they came in. They helped Rey Mysterio, and I. I don't know. I. It, it just. I don't know. Are we back? Something's moving. Mm -hmm. Come on, Mike. It shouldn't be. Are we good now? Yeah, it's not coming out of a good mic. Jesus Christ. The fuck? Okay. God damn. I think we're back. Okay, what was the last thing? Okay, what was the last thing you heard me? What was the last thing you guys heard me say? Because, God fucking Lee. Never fucking fail, guys. Always something. I'm telling you. Um. Oh. So that was my other complaint. That was my other complaint. If you guys didn't hear what I said, I was just basically saying stuff along the lines of, um, you know, it was just kind of a, it, it was just kind of a, it was just kind of a, I just didn't really like, I, I just didn't really like putting people in those situations that don't make any sense. To me, Ray and Dominic uh, and Santos have had something that's very, like, you know, uh, and I wouldn't say rich, but it's very good in, in the story department, and I just think that just made no sense. Um, uh, but as for the other thing, Ray 
getting the pinfall victory over Dominic for the second year in a row doesn't make much sense at all. I mean, what are we thinking, man? Does this, like... How does this end? How are you going to end this now? There's no tie no. here. And that's the other thing. Santos is kind of, like, doing a thing right now where he's in a new group. Don't you think it would have been a little more beneficial for not only Santos to pick up the victory, but for Dominic to get a win under his belt, too? I mean, what is this guy, just a fucking loser? Apparently, man, the way they're the way they're doing this, man, they're fucking bucking him like one against Ray, so it's been weird, man. Oh, fucking kill me. <laughs> Tony kind of really trying to get that fucking engagement from Cody, bro. Ugh. Bro. It's wild. Oh. Fucking Tony Khan. Dude. Logan just put in the chat, Dustin Rhodes just challenged Joe for the world title. I'm sorry. Did Joe just not do a contract signing? For a match already? Like, what? Oh, fuck, man. How awful. God. How fucking awful is that? It fucking blows, dude. What a desperate plea for fucking attention. You guys ready to see Dustin defending the world title against Swerve? That would be so ass. What the fuck? Swerve and Dustin. They do get that history from World's End. They do? Yeah, remember when Keith Lee got hurt and Dustin stepped in? Oh, yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? Why did he? They got history, bro. Yeah. Um... Santo, back to this, uh, Santos absolutely, I think, needed a victory here. Um, now, you could say Andrade did too, but Andrade didn't even get the fucking pin. No, it was no. Ray. Ray got the fucking pin, and fucking Andrade just started just marking out. He was literally in the ring just jumping up and down, like a fucking kangaroo. Like, dog. Ugh. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the obsession with you know fucking putting Rey Mysterio over at WrestleMania is, but it's there and it it's really is. prominent. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this. I don't know what's up with this. But I, 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 I don't. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, yeah, so Ray is 2-0 again, uh, against situations with Dominic at WrestleMania. Literally, no what Carly, the fuck? no turn or nothing. Teased all that type of shit and nothing ever happened. Literally. Literally, man. Makes no damn sense. None of this makes sense. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um... So the uh, Kelsey and Lane Johnson come and help Ray win, and then they all celebrate, and it's a happy ending. I honestly thought going into this, maybe Carlito was going to turn on Ray, or maybe everybody was going to turn on Ray. No. Legato needs the steam. They do. They really do. The steam. Way more than the fucking LWO is. The LWO is lame as fuck. Oh, they're so damn lame and cringy, dude. This group should be temporary, and they are not acting like it's temporary, man. Please. Please fix that. Yes, the LWO is not it. Uh, Joaquin and Raul, or uh, Cruz del Toro, have about as... Uh, uh, my fucking thumb has more fucking charisma than the both of them. This fucking pen on my desk has more charisma than fucking Joe Kwan and Cruz del Toro. Fucking Joe Kwan? <laughs> Literally, man. Literally. Zelina Vega's in the group. Who gives a shit? People want to see her with Andrade. Literally. People don't want to fucking see her in the LWO. The cringy-ass babyface faction. What the fuck? But what you could build on is Legato del Fantasma. Because they're actually a new, original fucking group. Makes no damn sense. Uh, but no. We just continue putting Rey Mysterio and the LWO over. 
for some reason. This is no good, bro. This is no good. Dominic looks bad. Oh, he looks horrible. So, there you have it. I wasn't wasn't really a fan of this whatsoever. No, I really wasn't. <laughs> and the next match, Jay versus Jimmy. Damn. Brother versus brother, Yeet versus no Yeet. Ooh. This match got to be a no Yeet for me, man. It just yeah. kind of just happened, and it kind of just was a match. Ugh. So, so, they had an amazing video package. Oh, it was phenomenal. Yes, before, before, oh God, before this match came on, they had an amazing video package. They did. Um, this, it was so good. First of all, they come out and announce Lil Wayne as the greatest rapper of all time. Now listen. I don't want to throw any shade at Wayne. He's one of the goats. Easy. He is one of the best. But uh, I seen a lot of people talking like that was a like that was criminal that WWE said that. It's not. He is It's not a, it's not a crazy thing to say. It's not. But I don't think it's true. No, I do not. I love Wayne. I love Wayne. Um, but the greatest rapper of all time to announce him as that? Kind of wild, especially in his older age. His voice is kind of blown out at this point. So, you know what I mean? Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, to be honest. Um, you just said this in like 2011. Might have had some fuel behind that fire, but the fire kind of burnt out at this point, from in my opinion. Definitely in his in his in his older age, but yeah. it's not. It's really not a. It's not criminal to say. No, he is really one of the best. He's it, good. He is, and I don't know why people are. People were absolutely like so mad that they said that, and like okay. First of all, first of all, bro, when you say the fucking greatest rapper of all time is coming out, I'm thinking you just fucking resurrected Biggie Smalls from his fucking grave, and he's about to come out and fucking lay down Mo Money Mo Problems or something. So, I'm thinking Kendrick Lamar, right? No. <laughs> I'm thi- I won't- uh, now, again, I'm personally not one to think when I hear greatest rapper of all time, there's a couple, there's like three names that pop in my head. Biggie Smalls, Kendrick Lamar, and Eminem. Wayne? He's in that ten. I would probably say he's in that ten. He might even be in my five. He probably is in the five. At least seven. At least seven. Easy. But you got Biggie, you got Nas, you got Kendrick. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, Wayne on. is goaded. Wayne is absolutely goaded. So, yeah. Wayne. Now, don't get me wrong. Wayne is absolutely goaded. And nobody should be upset. Because Wayne, arguably, is the well, greatest of all time. But... I mean, he's the reason we got half of the ones we got today. Wayne is very responsible for a lot of people. Drake, Future, all those guys are because of Lil Wayne. At the end of the day, he brought him. He brought him to the top. My boy Tiger. <laughs> that fucking guy. Nah. Got one good. <laughs> um. No, but again, people, wrestling fans, they they are mad at this because they think their opinion is fact. No, they don't understand. Do I do? Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> they, 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 do. they don't understand the the concept of an opinion. But no, they don't. Wayne, arguably, to somebody out there, 
could be the greatest of all time. And that's not a dumb exactly. thing to say. People were getting mad as if I just went out there as it, or as if fucking Samantha Irvin went out there and said, the greatest rapper of all time, 6 9 That's a little wild. That would be wild. That would be some BS. Don't disrespect Wayne like that. But Wayne's in that contention, bro. He is. But in his old age, his voice is so leaned out, it was not it tonight. Listen. I mean, he could sing like the first part of a melody and then fucking just didn't say anything. Was just fucking saying yeah to fucking James. So, like, so <laughs> that was my other thing. He didn't even sing. That was the other thing. They said he was going to premiere a new single. And this motherfucker just comes out and plays a melody. <laughs> Not even the whole song. And he think and he sing he raps like 30 seconds of a milli. And then Jay Uso's song hits, and then he's ad libbing, It's on me now, Oos. <laughs> what? Uh, it was it was funny, man. He's funny in his old age, man. I don't get it, and I also do not like the Wayne disrespect amongst no. wrestling fans. He really is goaded, man. He, he is. is. He's for real goaded. And all these people. Refuse to say who they think is the greatest uh, rapper of all time because odds are these fucking people don't even listen to rap like that. Or it's some yuppie ass answer like J. Cole or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Come on. He is in that contention. Maybe he's not my number one, but he's in that contention, man. And for most people, he would be. If we're being honest here, he's one of the goats. But they were a little wild for that, and he literally just sang the first like 27 seconds of a milli and just started singing some random ass ad libs, bro. He must have been leaned out or something, because uh, that man in his older age is is something else, man. I saw an interview where he, don't, he didn't even remember half of his old lyrics and was shocked that was him. That wrote those lines. <laughs> oh, I love those videos where they tell him his lyrics and he's like, I, that was me? Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, those are great. But yeah, it, you know, again, fucking good old wrestling fans, they want to go out there, Lil Wayne, they think they're, they're funny if they think he's the greatest of all time. And I was seeing some and people put in the comments, well, since you don't think that, who's your favorite? And they just refuse to say, bro, if you're going to sit here and fight this fight... Who the fuck do you... Because I'll sit here right now and tell you mine. Yeah. Again, like I just said. Biggie, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar. Those guys are my... Some of my... Those are my top three that I think are in serious contention and could have a real claim for being the greatest rapper of all time. I'll sit here and say that. These motherfuckers never listen to hip hop a day in their fucking life. They probably barely even know. They probably don't. They probably don't even fucking know what a what what good rap music is. No oh, fuck no, man. A little dated community and shit. Or those fucking. I mean, they're wrestling fans, man. So you know, you know how they are, man. But hey, give the man some credit, bro. He is one of the goats. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, bro. And Eminem's not a bad, like... He's not a bad choice. He's a respectable choice. It's not a bad choice, bro. But again, the Lil Wayne disrespect is absolutely insane in the IWC. And again, half these motherfuckers probably don't even fucking know a goddamn thing about rap music. So please, get out of my face with this stuff. And again, if you yuppies are going to disrespect Wayne, at least say who you think exactly. is the greatest of all time. Because there's going to be some rhetoric, bro. I'll tell you that. Hey, I, my opinion's right. I'm a firm believer. I'll stick by my opinion. <sighs> well, let's move on to the to the lack fest of this fucking match, dude. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. See, but the thing is, bro... I'll sit here and tell you who I think, and I'll stand on it. Stand These on people that. just, he's not the greatest. Okay, who's the greatest then? I'm not going to say that. Y'all don't know shit. Y'all don't know nothing, bro. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Come on, bro. I'm back to the super kick party over here. Yes. <laughs> so. Spamming that X to left stick. Oh, bro. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> 
So Wayne, uh, after he gets done ad-libbing for fucking Jey Uso's entrance theme song, bro, these two, man. So the match didn't, so I was expecting, like Matt and Jeff, like Brett and Owen, I thought we were going to get, like, some cool, dramatic stare-down. Boy, they listen to sucks, Logan. That's the thing, bro. They're going to say some bullshit. They're gonna, I'm going to ask them what they listen to. They're going to say no. some Don Tolliver or some no. bullshit. Like, get the fuck out of here. No, that... that, <laughs> that see, see, see that, that's, that's the thing, though. That's... When people think about stuff like that, like, I remember when everybody was hating on me... When uh, I tweeted at Mikey Ruckus to change FTR's yeah, exactly. theme song, people were like, "You don't have good taste in music, motherfucker! How the fuck do you know my well, my what's in my goddamn playlist?" Exactly, bro. You, this shit heat, bro. What but you talking about? I, I get what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're, I, I get what you're saying. It's just the way people think. They think, you know, if you say something that they like is bad, then they think you're. Music taste is bad. And a lot of people... I get what you're saying, though. Because a lot of people would probably think... Um, a lot of a lot of people... A lot of people would... Now, there are a lot of people that do think... Like, people like Kendrick are, like, the greatest. But there are a lot of people I tell... Kendrick's one of my favorites. And they just say, like... Oh, oh he's overrated. He's shit like that. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. I get what no, you're man. saying. But... That's how it is. But I'm sorry, bro. These wrestling fans, bro... They, they, they listen to some two fucking Newport... Pack of ass, bro. Come on. They should be, come on. They really fucking do. They really do. They don't, it, I don't know. It is what it is. But, again, if you're going to come out and hate on an artist, at least tell me your artist. Exactly. So I can compare and know I'm right. So. Exactly. You got to you gotta defend your opinions like fucking old, like a religion, man. I believe in that shit. No, you have to. You have to, cause, cause, it, especially in the in the IWC, oh, you yeah. know, people don't like, like, you know, you were just saying, you think your opinions are fact, oh, and yeah. <laughs> it's 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 not for it's me. Not it's it's the, not that I think that they're fact. It's just I think just, what I believe in is valid. valid. Exactly, it's a valid opinion. Fact might be egotistical to say but but the the <laughs> thing about people in the IWC is bro they cannot handle a different opinion if you have a different opinion than them they to them they hate what they like you hate what they like yes. you say you don't you know i'm i'm not crazy about you know fucking uh, orange cassidy oh so you just fucking love the Miz. You know what I mean? That type of opinion yes. translates to them for stuff like music, movies, other shit, man. Because um, that's just how wrestling fans are. You don't like one thing, so they assume you love the other thing that yes. kind of opposes that. Like, again, going back to my whole FTR thing. Yeah. When FTR's song first came out, I didn't like it. And no. I, it grew on it me grew since on then. Mm -hmm. But... I, I'll never forget people tweeting at me, so you just like Def Rebel? No. Who, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> but people can't, you know, and I do under, like, that's, you know, what, you know, it's an opinion. That's yeah. what we have to do, bro. We got to stand on the business of what we like. But it's like people in this community cannot take the fact that somebody they dislike when somebody likes something other than them. Mm -hmm. You know they what I mean? Just or just this fucking complete opposite idiot, man. Yeah. And so that's that's one thing I always see a lot. That's A, one reason I, I do stay off Twitter. And B, why I've never once looked through the comments and been like, you're an idiot for thinking. Uh, I've never, you know, called anybody out or looked through our comments and been like, man, such and such, you're an idiot. You're a dumb fuck because you think this guy should beat this guy. It's like, no, you probably just have a different fucking perspective on it. But wrestling fans don't understand that. No, they just, they like one thing. And if you like the other thing, you're the enemy, man. Like all tonight, um, when they announced the fucking, um, the, you know, attendance, all I saw was the 80K attendance from the fucking all in. <sighs> 
greater than. Like, like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? We can you not like both? Uh, to be honest, night one of WrestleMania and All In are damn near on the same level. I, I would probably put All In a tiny bit above because it was a little more entertaining overall. But still. Why are you comparing? Like, I saw another tweet. It was probably the dumbest one I saw all night. It was the main event tonight, that tag match. And oh my they God. put the Sting, <laughs> you know, retirement tag match greater than tonight's, you know, main event. And, you know, I would agree with that. But the thing is, why the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> How do they correlate? That? What are you trying to do here? How do they correlate at all? They don't. You're just throwing shit out there to be like, this one's yeah. better than... Who cares? Yeah, this individual thing was probably better, in my opinion, than this individual thing. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares, dude? <laughs> like, ah, fucking right, dude, elite, bro. AEW elitists, bro, are on another level, right? Dude, they are coping so hard <laughs> lately. It's insane, man. It's insane. Yeah. It, it is, but yes, people in the I do, people in just the wrestling community, they just get so mad when people have other opinions. Mm -hmm. So they don't, yeah, they don't understand. Like they don't understand. Um, you the, just like something, and there's no like, yeah, fucking side to it. It's not civil war, dude. We're not at war here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Dude, they've been really bad lately, man. It's been insane. They are coping so hard, bro. It's 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 insane. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And see, the fact that we poke fun at AEW fans, to use this as an analogy, they would look at all of us as WWE shows. Oh, they would look at us as some fucking Triple H cocks. Yes. Man. Yes. As if... We, we just love everything they do. Yes, as if we just hate the existence of AEW. Oh, and want it to fail. Yeah, that's that's how their minds work. Dude, so I want to be excited on Wednesdays again. I'm not, and that's not good. When I wasn't excited for Mondays or Saturdays in the past, I was honest about it because I wanted to be. Now, I'm excited for Mondays, and it's fun, and I wish I was still excited for Wednesdays. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and that's 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 the thing, that's the thing. Um, yeah, and that's that's the funny part about it. About it is, you know, we do love both, and we yeah. do want to see both of them succeed because it just means better for wrestling fans. But it just doesn't quite click in their brain. It just doesn't. You can't be yeah to 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 those tribalistic ass fans. You cannot be fans of both. You can't be a professional wrestling fan. You got to be a company you fan. Be a company like dude. I just want to see good shit, bro. I would. I, I hope TNA is doing good, bro. Like, literally, dog. Like, come on. Like, yeah. I don't watch them. Even if they were good, probably wouldn't watch them much. But I hope they're doing good. Exactly. Because I just want everything to be good, man. That's the goal. Yeah. Like, like I don't go in and do a fucking MCU movie hoping that shit's ass, bro. I want it all to be good. If it sucks, it sucks. Yeah. But I want it to be good. And, and and that's the one thing I hate about, like, you know, like, like AEW... Uh, content creators on nights like tonight and like the wwe ones do it on nights where aew has pay-per-views mm -hmm. it's like they just tweet out annoying fucking things about the show like they'll just tweet out this match sucks lol how do people watch this man you, you, why the fuck are you watching it then yeah, fucking go watch fucking Board you, collision, man. Yeah. What the fuck? Why don't you fucking wait a couple more hours and you can fucking watch uh, Penta versus Commander? Why don't you wait 21 more minutes for your episode of Collision to start? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. It fucking ends at fucking, like, what, 2 o'clock, 2.30? Mm -hmm. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. I don't know, but that's 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 how fans and, that's how fans and, and what we do work. So mm -hmm. you just gotta... You just got to uh, just be... Just, just fucking... Just, just, just be... Be real, bro. Yes, just be honest. You can't be go here, wrong. Man. Can't go wrong with being honest. I will never play to a certain company or something. I'm not doing that shit. Exactly. That's not. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm that's not. not paying me. That's. <laughs> Tony that, Khan, if you hear this, Triple H, if you hear this, bro, you send that wallet. I might. I might be at elitist. 
depending on how much money you're willing to throw, man. I'll probably yeah. take Tony's money and still shit on his product. Probably. <laughs> I mean, his own people do it anyway, so they still get paid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anytime you need me to make that AEW makes pro wrestling a better place tweet, bro, Dang, who bro. said it didn't? What the, bro? <laughs> These motherfuckers are acting like we're out here like, yeah, just close the doors. <laughs> like, like bro, what? what are you talking about, bro? Ugh. So, yes, that's why you can't... You gotta be honest, man. You gotta be honest as, as any sort of creator in the wrestling community. You gotta be honest because, bro, if if, if you fake it, dude, it, it just... It's so obvious, dude. It really fucking is. It really fucking is, man. So, so you gotta be honest, bro. You just gotta be honest and... Don't don't care what anybody thinks about your opinions because it's your fucking opinion. So it really is, man. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, tiny, tiny buddy. All this rant came from Little Wing Discourse, man. What a podcast we got, <laughs> dude. It was it was <laughs> annoying me, bro. It was fucking annoying me. But yeah, yeah, they can they can fucking kiss my ass for all I'm concerned. Um. Literally everything they ever post, dude. Fucking thank God for it. He does like bro, bro Dax, man. I don't know what Tony Khan is paying that man, bro. FTR bald. Like, bro, his, your own elitist hate you, bro. They call you FTR bald. <laughs> like, like, come on, bro. <laughs> They're your, they don't like you. Why are you? So, I don't get it, man. He must be getting that bag, cause. I hope he is, man. Yeah, he must be, but yeah, dude, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Good old community we're in, but yes, good old wrestling, good old wrestling fans, am I right? Um, so Jay and Jimmy, um, again, I thought we were gonna get some cool little stare down, like we did with uh, Brett and Owen and Matt and Jeff. Jay suicide dived. In the beginning of the match, just taking Jimmy out, and they both started the match in their fucking entrance gear, um, just wrestling, and it was just, it was just not what I thought it was gonna be. Exactly, like, I just, I don't know what I thought we were gonna get, but it wasn't this, man, they didn't go into each other like I thought they would with like a usually with these bloodline matches there's like there's the talking there's the taunting between the two yeah. parties and there was like none of that man there was a little bit at one point where you know um you know Jimmy was trying to like get Jay to be like oh man I'm sorry for all this I don't want to do this and like a dumbass Jay fell for it like I fully expect Jay to be like nah bro I gotta finish this bro I gotta get the at the end of the day Bro, you cost me the world title, bro. I gotta get that look back. And he just, like, went for the hug. Like, bro, you... What? And see, another thing in the video package building up to this that I really did not understand was... Um... Jimmy turns on Jay, and then he just says, you know, I'm, I choose to run with greatness... Are we going to not acknowledge how all this started because of you? You, you turned on the group. And it, it, it would have made so much sense if this was all a plot for just to get Jay out of the bloodline. Like yeah. if Jimmy, you know, didn't kick Roman, but he, uh, you know, just enticed Jay to do it. And then, you know, Roman fake, you know, could have faked taking him out. Jimmy comes back, costs Jay, and then he tells him, you know... I just wanted to get you out of the group so it would have been devious. So there would have been a little more, like, you know, hatred in there. I wanted to get you out of the group because I wanted to be the tribal heir. And then Roman could have just ended up giving it to Solo anyway. Exactly. You know, and it would have been great. But Jimmy turned, said to Roman's face he didn't want him to turn out like Roman. And then he just goes back with him. What are you doing here, man? Major plot hole. And I really think that could go hand in hand with what Paul Heyman said. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, the bloodline, the ending to the bloodline story has been rewritten multiple times. And I think this is one of the biggest victims of that. I think this was meant to pair with a different ending to the bloodline story. And they changed that, but they didn't evolve this. 
Yeah. So I think it just was a victim of all that, man. And what I thought at the time was more of Jimmy um, not wanting Jay to become Roman. So yeah. that's why he didn't want him to win the title. Because, like, I don't want you to turn into the monster that he is. So I gotta, I gotta take you out at the end of the day. I gotta, you know, knock you off that trail. Right. And you know, Jay obviously, like a normal, sensible human being, even though like your brother would want that lick back because that's just how that shit works. Especially between brothers, you would think Maury would want to be a little more competitive because you know, that's your brother. <laughs> yeah. So you think you'd be more cool with you know, going back at him because at the end of the day, that's your brother. So Jimmy, so Jay would want to go back at him. He's like, you know, you're my brother. I still love you. I gotta get it back, but Jimmy don't see it that way, and they could have done something. But it's just Jimmy's just with the bloodline, <laughs> and it just it just I don't get it, man. I think it's really just a victim of all those changes, man. Um, especially with the Rock coming, and I think this was one of the biggest hits to that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think it, I think it was a huge I think it was a huge blunder um, in, in their story, and uh, Jay. Um, as he was going for probably like his 30th super kick in the match, instead of like a, you know, chop fest or a, you know, trading blows, bro, they traded super kicks. Um, so Jay was going to hit a super kick on Jimmy and Jimmy told him to stop. He told him he was sorry for everything. And he, you know, went in for the handshake and the hug and then, he ended up getting uh, in some offense. It looked like he was about to beat Jay. Uh, Jay would then turn over the offense, dude, hit two super kicks, and uh, Uso splash, and that was it. It just ended. That was it. And then, not even that it just ended, I maybe thought we would get something after the match that maybe looks like, you know, maybe we're going to bring this in a certain direction. Are they going to hug? Are... They gonna do a stare off and one walks away. Are they gonna continue the feud? Jay's just laying there and he's saying something to Jimmy. They don't acknowledge what he says, and then the screen just fades to black as Jimmy's sit or as Jimmy's laying on his fucking face and Jay is just standing above him and like, it just fades to black. Literally, it's like we. Where do we go next? It didn't fucking really give us any information on where it goes next. Is does one brother, you know, is able to squash it more than the other one, and the other one's not coping with the loss, or is you know, it's none of that. No hint of any of that, to be honest. So, kind of just leaves us hanging in all reality. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, man. So, so yeah, that was the brother versus brother. Like I said, man, very just. I, I wasn't um, I wasn't I wasn't huge on uh, on this match. I'm gonna be honest. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, man. I wasn't I wasn't too huge on this match. I, I thought it I thought it was just I thought it lacked what I anticipated of it. No, so, yeah, yeah. This one went 11 minutes and five seconds, and actually the tag match before went 11 minutes and five seconds as well, bro. So oh. the next match, damn that tag match was fucking 11 minutes. What the fuck? That shit felt longer, but in like a good way, I guess. And I think that was 11 minutes. Wow. Are we talking about the same tag match? The tag ladder? Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Ray and... Oh, I was going to say, what Andrade. the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, the, the tag team ladder match went 17 minutes. Oh, okay, that seemed like a more... Re okay, yeah. I was going to say, what the fuck? So, <laughs> damage control came out. Uh, damage Control versus uh, Bianca Jade and Naomi. Bianca Jade and Naomi had a pretty good entrance, bro. They had a pretty good entrance. They looked like gods ascending from the sky, um, coming down from their pedestal, and then they all had their own little individual entrances. Uh, this was basically... Just a showcase. Just a squash yeah. of, of Damage Control. Um... Kind of what we all expected here, just to show off the, you know, the main three, obviously, that they want to show off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just to show off Jade, get Naomi and Bianca on the WrestleMania card, and then get, get damage control on the card as well. So, that was pretty much that. This one really had no substance to it whatsoever. Um, it was kind of just, it was, it was kind of just there. Um, Jade... Jade looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. Jade looked pretty good. You could definitely tell they're still 
trying to, you know, hide her flaws. I would assume that's the whole point of her the being played. women match. Yeah, I would assume that's the whole point of her being in... A trio like, right now, technically. Right. Um, and she caught, I want to say it was Kyrie Sane. No, it was Dakota Kai. Um, she caught her in midair. Um, or, no, 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 sorry. Dakota went to do a... Mm, a wheelbarrow type move and she got caught in the jaded and jade cargill picks up or as paul Heyman says jade cargill um uh, Heyman, bro that, that was hilarious jade cargill uh put um yeah hit her with the jaded and put her away mm. and that was it man the baby face team Picked up the victory, and what was, like I said, it was a decent showcase. Nothing really too much more other than that. No, exactly. It's it's job to showcase, you know, Jade and Naomi being back and whatnot, and, um, or, you know, here, and Naomi being back. And it did its job, man. It, it, it was good for what it was, man. For sure. And the next match for the Intercontinental Ooh. Championship. Man, oh, man. Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Wow. This was a fucking match, man. Shit. So, beforehand, Sami is in the... Back. He's in the back with his son and his wife. And he tells his wife to keep his son in the back because he doesn't want his son to see this. He doesn't want his son, uh, you know, obviously I'm thinking he's he's going to, uh, he's he's going to um, lose. Uh, but, so he tells her to stay in the back with, with um, or he tells her to keep his kid in the back. And Sammy goes out there. Sammy's, uh, Sa Sammy goes to walk away, I mean. And Gable comes up to him. And he says, uh, you know, he thanks Gable. He says, thanks for, you know, the advice. And he, he tells him, let's go. And then Gable says, no, uh, we're not going to go. He tells Gable, you're going to go, or he tells Sammy, you're going to go do this by yourself. And Sammy was like, well, what about all the, all the work we've done? What do you mean? And Gable, and Gable was, uh, Gable said, Gable said, uh, Gable said, uh, no, you got this. You always do. But you owe me one. Um, and Sammy's walking. Sammy's walking up the ramp. And right before he goes into gorilla position, Kevin Owens is standing right there. And at that moment, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Sammy might actually fucking win this thing. Yep. So Owens pushes him. And he says, uh, go do this. And he's screaming in his face. And... Sammy walks through a uh, gorilla position and he does his whole entrance, bro. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing. Gunther had a really cool entrance. They got like this cool like close up of his face mm -hmm. as he's uh, rising, picking his head up, uh, doing his entrance. And these guys, absolutely, I'm surprised this match. Only went 15 minutes. Wow. It felt more than that. It really did. Yeah. Fuck. It really did. Sammy and Gunther put on one of the better matches that we will probably see all weekend. I will second that. You know, this obviously ties for the main event with the most, you know, it's the best match of the night. I would say this is the better quality match. I might say the main event was more fun to watch. But um, this was definitely the best quality match we yeah. got tonight. This was the best, like, just professional wrestling match. Mm -hmm. I would say the tag match was more of just, like, an entertaining fuck fest. Like some, like, AEW, like, type <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, but this was just, like, a fucking phenomenal ass move to move match, man. This shit was fucking amazing. There you go, pissing off the IWC. Yeah, like Pissing you, off the colliders. Fucking, yeah, you know, what do you, a collider no more? <laughs> so, yeah, dude, these guys, bro, like I said, man, oh my lord. 
This man, Sami Zayn, was absolutely getting the fucking dog shit beat out of him uh, oh. by Gunther. Um, this man uh, started off, uh, Sami started off pretty hot. He started off pretty hot, man. Um, and once Gunther got into that groove and he was, he was whooping his ass, man. Um, Chopped to Larry, it's bro, that man. Yes. Hitting him, man. Classic yes. Gunther. This man was absolutely putting on a banger. He had Sami Zayn in such a good position. He was talking shit to his wife. He hit Sami Zayn with three power bombs in a row. Sami kicked out, hit him with a lariat. Uh, then he hit him with his big drop kick, and then he did a splash. He went up, did another splash, and at this point he's walking around. He's laughing. He's not giving a fucking flying fuck about anything. He goes to go for the third splash, and Sammy hits him with a halluva kick while he's standing on the top rope, you know, with it kind of, yeah, as he's climbing, like, yeah. and, you know, and he's got his head down. He hits Gunther with the halluva kick, goes up, bro, this absolutely made me fucking get up out of my seat, bro. This man, Sammy Zayn hits Gunther with a fucking turnbuckle brain buster. Wildest fucking brain buster I've ever seen in my life, dude. Dude, this man, Gunther, folded. <laughs> like, Sami Zayn, then, what were you saying? Like, for a man of Gunther's size and, you know, a man of, you know, Sami Zayn's size compared to him, that was like the fastest, smoothest fucking heavy hitting brain buster I've probably ever seen, bro. That shit was wild. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. And Sammy This um Sammy then hit two back to back Haluva kicks on Gunther and pinned him one, two, three in the middle of the fucking ring. Wow. Crowd erupted and Sammy is your new intercontinental champion. <sighs> You want to go? I'm okay with it. Because, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, this means, you know, Chad Gable's going to go heel. He's going to turn on Sammy. Triple H, there's one thing I know about Triple H and his baby faces. Right. He loves for them to go through a dark phase in their journey. The greatest example I would bring up, Gargano. But look at Sammy himself. Sammy himself, exactly. He went through a dark place. He was with the fucking bloodline fucking beating up his best friend and he ended up being the good guy in the end still gargano he ended up fucking attacking alistair black in the parking lot because he was so fucking delusionally focused on tommaso champa it had to be him to defeat him man um so he did something horrible and he got paid you know he had to pay for it triple h loves telling that story with baby face and i genuinely think um that was kind of a Vince heel face to be honest to me it doesn't really correlate to what they got going on now with this current story you know what I mean that was right. that was a heel Vince you know Gable you know the shoes and shit him just being the annoying heel it was just an annoying there was no story behind it at the time um it wasn't until Triple H came in when, were, mm -hmm. I think when I think what Sir K means by a dark phase is him going through like adversity. Adversity, Look yeah. Look at Cody. And, and it and obviously fucking loss. What the <laughs> with um well he didn't have Cody, you know, didn't do anything dark because he's fucking Mr. Good Boy. Um he's hey. Mr. Superman. <laughs> got a, he, what do you mean? He got his arm broken. <laughs> It. But he didn't do nothing dark. He stayed in a Kimura for five minutes with a broken arm. But what Triple H loves with his baby faces is when they do something dark in their mm. journey because, you know, they're so delusional and shit. Mm. Sammy did it. Gargano right. did it. And I think that's what they're going to do with Gable, man. I think he might do something to Sammy at some point, but I think in the end, Gable will be a baby face when he wins his big, you know, title win whenever that is. So, mm. I know... It's not the at the end of the day they should have went with Gable um, tonight. It should have been Gable, should have been the one that won. But it's not. I'm okay with it, man. It's really not affecting me all that much, to be honest. Um, obviously, I would have loved Sammy won a world title first. Yeah. Like that was easily the better path. But in the end, of the day, it's the path we're here on now, and this could help in Sammy's journey to a world title. Um, 
so we're here for it. It's not what we should have got, but it's what we're getting, man. And I don't think it's all that bad, man. The one thing I'm scared for mm -hmm. is I do not want WWE to look at this as the end game. Mm -hmm. for, yeah. I do not want them to look at this as Sammy paid off his story. No. This is just a journey in it. This was nice. You know, I mean, it was nice, you know, and, and I wanted to be so happy for Sammy. And I hate saying this because Gunther's put so much good into this title, but it's the fucking Intercontinental Championship. And that's not saying this anything about the IC title, but bro, this was his time to win a fucking world championship. And that's the part that kind of scares me. And it's like, I want to be so happy because Sammy got a great moment and he got the win over Gunther under his belt. But it's like, I just think it would have played better to the story if Sami Zayn lost here. And I don't oh, know yeah. why you go with that decision because Gable and Sammy... Where's gonna be? Where's the joy in that if Gable wins? You know what I mean? Where's the joy in Gable winning? You know the title yeah. if and and see the thing with with Gunther that I don't understand is I don't I don't understand why like for example we're doing Clash at the Castle again right so I don't understand why we couldn't have Gunther lose or sorry win this match. Sammy, you know, didn't he, win. He doesn't win, right? He loses. Gunther goes on to drop the title to Gable at Clash. That way, by Berlin, Gunther's competing for the World Heavyweight or WWE Championship. And then maybe by WrestleMania next year, we come full circle with Sami Zayn versus Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. And you can play up to Sammy's never beat Gunther. So Gunther could be like, dude, I fucking dog walked you last year. What do you think's going to happen this year? Then we do exactly what was done tonight next year with Sammy winning the world championship. I think there's a lot more beauty and a lot more joy in that story. And then you also get Chad Gable beating the arch nemesis of Gunther. That's not where we went. No. That's not where we went. And I just... Re the thing that's just really scaring me about this whole situation... And I really don't mean for this to be sour because I love Sammy. Yeah. And I'm happy for him. But I don't want WWE to fucking look at this and say... This wasn't the end game for Sammy. And I hope they don't treat it like that. Yes. And I really hope they... They, they, they don't... Sammy... He, he was a contender, and he was right. He's he's championship material. But he doesn't have a championship. He didn't go after the fucking championship. You know what I mean? That's what's really scaring me. And that's why it's hard to be happy for Sammy. Because Sammy's one of my... Like, dude, with the passing of Bray Wyatt, yeah. Sammy is probably my favorite active competitor. On the roster. Yep. I love Sami Zayn. Like, I mean, obviously, like, other than, like, Roman Reigns. Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns are, like, right up there for me. In terms of active competitors right now. And take this for me, if anybody. Because I love Sami Zayn, dude. I fucking cried last year mm -hmm. when that man won at WrestleMania. And told the story he told with the bloodline. But I just... It's hard to be happy because I hope WWE doesn't sell themselves short on what could be a great fucking story for Sami Zayn. And I really hope the championship that he already won twice isn't the end game for him. Because it shouldn't be. Which is also scary because I also think another mindset they, the company, has with this is I think both world titles are going to be pretty tied up. In their mind, that Sami Zayn can't really go for him for a little bit. Um, obviously, after tonight, we all know Gunther's going to go for one of them. Yeah. Cody's going to be one. Um, they probably want to keep it on him for a little decent amount of time. They want Gunther to win one. Um, who knows what they want to do with Seth? And, you know, I hope not, but who knows what they want to do with Priest? 
Um, they got the money in the bank nothing. winner. They got to think about this year. You know what I mean? So there's a lot on their plate in terms of world championship winners, and it he should be, but I don't think Sami Zayn's on their plate right now. And I think it's fucked up and it's wrong. He should be, but I don't think it is. And I think that's why they made the decision. This the decision tonight. Um, and it's bullshit. He should be in that contention. If anything, it's not LA Knight. It should be Sami Zayn winning that fucking Money in the Bank briefcase. Because I'm totally fine with the baby face casting, cashing it in in the moment. I think that's perfectly fine for most baby faces. Maybe not Boy Scouts like fucking Cody Rhodes over there. But I think it's okay in most instances. But I feel like in their minds, that world title, those world titles situations are kind of hogged up at the moment. And it should, Sami should be one of the ones hogging it up, but he's not. And to in their mind. Yeah. Which is scary. Yeah, and like Logan says at the end of the match, you know, Michael Cole's talking big about one. Sammy finally won the big one. No, he didn't. And I'm sorry, Gunther's put uh, just astronomical amount of prestige on that title, but it's still a mid card title. If Sammy didn't win this title before, I think this could have sufficed. But he won this title before. It's not new to him. If it was new to him, it might have been a little better. I might have been a little, all right. Like with Sheamus. Exactly. Like it would have been a big deal if Sheamus beat Gunther because... he never won that thing before. And it would make... It's the one that's kept him from being a Grand Slam champ. Exactly. But he's won it twice already. So it's just kind of a win, to be honest, to get, you know... Him on to you know something else so right and, and and when I say that you know I, I don't mean for it to be a bad thing but no. it's like that is why you know Gunther had to it's step away done. from the title exactly. because at the end of the day it's, it's a mid card title and there's nothing wrong with that I want to stress that there's nothing wrong with it but well, at the end of the day to hear that. yeah right at the end of the day it's a mid card title and. You can only go so far in terms of just, there's just levels to move up. It's not the end game. The world championship in this business is the end game. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody gets in this business to be IC champ and call it quits. You know what I mean? You want to be the world champ. You want to be the guy. But again, and I don't, I don't mean for this to be sour grapes because I love Sammy, but I just have a real fear that WWE is going to look at this as... This is the big one. We gave him the big win. No, man. At this point, your best option is, you know, eventually Gable beat Sammy. And maybe you have Gunther and Sammy chase the fucking title at the same time. Where Gunther wins in the end. And he's chasing Gunther again. It's kind of what you got to do. I hope I'm not going to eat my own dick in the future with, you know, being not as concerned with this right now. But I probably will at this point. But, um... It's not what they should have done. It's what they went with. So hopefully they can steer it in a good direction after this, man. Yeah, I don't know. And I hate... I hate it. Again, like I said, I want to be so happy for Sammy because it it, it, it was a gr- It was probably... It's probably going to be match of the weekend. Probably more than likely. And it just... It was amazing. And it was an awesome moment, but... At the end of the day, man, it's just I'm very scared WWE looks at this as his big victory. And it's, it's not. It's a journey. It's part of the journey. If you don't fucking put a world championship on this guy, bro, you are so stupid because you're leaving so much fucking money on the table. Oh, they really are. Like, dude, Sami Zayn's got that. It just reminds me of that Johnny Gargano story. Mm -hmm. It's the type of story where I want to fucking be there and fucking cry with this man as he's holding up his first world championship. That's the story. And I don't want WWE to fucking miss out on that because how can you? He's so over. He's... Yesterday we want to talk about eras. Eras. This guy... Oh my... Fucking Pat McAfee tonight was making fun of Michael Cole for saying era. Oh, dude, Go that ahead. fucking popped me, bro. But it's like, that. we want to talk about eras. This man, Sami Zayn, is fucking so responsible for the renaissance era we're in. It's it's not even funny. Like yeah. he, and, and, and you don't want to... 
You don't want to tell that story of him holding up his first world heavyweight or world championship? Really missing the mark if you think this is his big victory because it is not. And you're leaving so much on the table if you want to end it here. Exactly. I don't know, man. But what I do know... This was match of the night. Mm -hmm. No question this was match of the night. And I loved Sami Zayn versus Gunther. Phenomenal fucking match, man. Truly. Mm -hmm. And in the end... This fucking match, man. Entrances started at 9 o'clock. The match did not get started until 9.28. That is when the bell rang. 9.28. 28 minutes... From start of the match, you know, with, pro, with the promo package and shit, Ugh. to the bell ringing. And because even when they all finally got in there and was uh, were in the ring, it was literally like a two minutes where fucking Seth and Roman were just circling the ring staring at each other. Another two minutes of just that alone. Like, holy setup, dog. Fucking No kidding. Hell. Entrant, like, dog. The Rock. Ugh, someone's got to stop this man, bro, please. What was that entrance? That was the most fucking <sighs> self... Just glazing I've ever fucking seen. Bro. There, bro. Cody Rhodes did his long entrance. He gave the weight belt to his father-in-law. Seth did did his whole entrance... And then the fucking rock, bro. Oh, this dude. It was so extra, but it was hard as fuck. It was, it was pretty, pretty tough, I can't fucking lie. Dude, just the just lightning bolts, and then fucking his voice, final boss, activated. <laughs> and then it's like 99% complete, <laughs> final boss, activated. And then this fucking glazer comes out there... With the fucking, with his, uh, Logo. Brahma Bull championship that, uh, fucking Muhammad Ali's wife gave him last night at the Hall of Fame to go out there and celebrate himself more. So he comes out there with that. He has this sick entrance where he's standing in a ring of fire that is his Brahma Bull logo. And... He's standing there and he's holding the championship and you, you know, you see the fire, you know, all you know, above, or, uh, you know, yeah. right at his feet or whatever, going up towards him. And uh, it was a sick visual. It was a sick visual. He takes, like, a year and a half coming down to the ring. Um, and then Roman comes out. We all know how this goes. Um, he stops. He's holding up the title. He's, he's doing his thing, right? He's doing his whole entrance, bro. Ring announcements and... A face-off. These guys did not touch until 28 minutes into the hour. And all of the entrances started at the top of the hour. 28 Bro. minutes for them to finally lock up. Oh, my God. And then at that... It was like 15 more minutes. It just The first five minutes was just a lock-up. And then Cody tagged in. And then... Seth tagged back in. And then Cody tagged back in. And then Roman stared at The Rock, uh, waiting to tag him in. And The Rock's just standing there. And he finally fucking puts his hand out. And Roman tags him. And The Rock comes in. And we were off to a slow start, dude. There's a clip going around, I'm sure you guys could find it, of The Rock's fucking knee giving out. So, they're all outside fighting, and the ref goes to count because this was supposed to be a regular tag match. Because I kept asking, is this a tornado tag match? And all of us were under the assumption of no. Um, yeah, all of us were under the assumption of, like, no, this is a... It's this a is a tag. Yeah, this is just a normal tag match. And the ref goes to count, and Rock says... Um, don't you fucking count. And yes, they got that on TV. Don't you fucking count or you're fired. I'm the final boss. I'm the final boss. Don't you count. Don't you count or you're fired. Tony Khan every day. He really does. Final boss. Final boss. Final boss. Final boss. So, fucking, 
Dude, this man, Rock Bro, oh my god, this man was absolutely killing me in this match, dude. The way, <sighs> just the way he was just fatigued the whole match. Bro, every time this man laid eyes on a fucking water bottle or a bottle of fucking Prime, he fucking ran towards that shit like he was in fucking doom, oh. bro. Like he just needed that water to survive, bro. Oh my god, it they, was so funny, dude. They planted that shit around the fucking arena like it was fucking Resident Evil, fucking like that healing thing that you would put on yourself that the game would put around every time you needed it. Oh. They put that shit around like that for the man needed the water, bro. That shit was, bro. Oh, dude. That man was so fucking gassed, bro. Oh, it was fucking hilarious, dude. It was so funny. It was so funny. Um, oh, one on one match will kill that man. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> so excited for fucking next year to see him in a one on one situation with Roman Reigns because his fatigue and just towards the end of the match when he was moping around <laughs> was just absolutely one of the highlights of my night. This man cannot work for shit anymore oh, but dude. but he <laughs> in terms of fatigue but he fucking absolutely like sir k this man absolutely believes in himself he does this man genuinely believes he's still like oh two level in the ring quality <sighs> man he's just Stumbling his ass off. <laughs> this whole fucking match just fucking huffing and puffing. <laughs> fucking looks like me when I get up at 8 in the fucking morning. Oh, just man. A fucking, speaking of getting up at fucking in the crack of dawn, bro. What happened to Roman's hair? I have never seen Roman's hair that oh, dry dude. and like just messy. Bro look like he just got out of bed. By this man match. looked like a mad scientist. <laughs> His fucking hair was so... It looked like he had a mane. It really His hair did. was, like, so poofy. He looked like a fucking lion. I mean, you never seen Roman's hair like that in this whole fucking... His whole career. <laughs> like, bro, how much did this take out? Bro, that shit was hilarious. The Rock, he thinks he is still goat status, bro. And that man is <sighs> fucking slugging around that goddamn... Bro, Sting moves better than The Rock is moving, bro. Bro, Sting was unfazed, bro. <laughs> and this man, Rock, is fucking stumbling, bro. He looked like when I fell on the street that one time for like 10 feet, bro. That's how he was walking this whole match. Ugh. He was just popping in and doing the most basic fucking moves. It was so fun. He would just pop in, punch, punch, punch. Throw him out of the ring, and, and then he gets out of the ring. <laughs> and dude, if you would look at him sometimes, this man would just be leaning on the apron, just, just like, <sighs> <laughs> dude. Oh, bro, this man. Yes, he is still at goat status, bro. This man cracked me the fuck up tonight, dude. The way he jumped into that Cody cutter. <laughs> was my favorite moment of that entire match. The way... Bro just fucking died. Suicide dived oh. into that motherfucker. It's like the old uh, Call of Duty dolphin dive. He really this did. This man... Work. Oh, bro. <laughs> or the part where Roman speared him, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he's just got that fucking looked like a fucking crying baby dude oh what was he making that face the other thing when he would go for the people's elbow <laughs> and he would when the part where he jumps over the person he just, it he was just, just the fucking most exhausted jump ever dude it looks like he ran out of stamina and died in light bro just the littlest <sighs> tiny hop oh world. my god dude literally the stamina bar in 2k that little, that little blue circle dude oh, that shit was fucking gone that whole match for them yep you know when you run out and it turns red <laughs> it was fucking red the whole match bro it was red the whole match but dude seriously this like again the rock absolutely cracked me up the whole time but even through his fatigue Holy fuck, did he put on a banger. This shit was fun as hell, dude. A funny-ass fucking match. This was such a fun match. This was such a fun match. Uh, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was awesome. He goes to give the fucking weight belt to... And he, he said, Mama Rhodes! Mama Rhodes! Mama Rhodes! 
he starts going over there and he's slapping it. You know, he's doing his fucking thing and he's slapping his arm with the weight belt. <laughs> and he goes in the ring, jumps into a Cody cutter, starts getting his ass whooped. Um, Roman speared him. It was a near end. Yeah. Uh, a near ending sequence there. Bro, it was so funny. <laughs> It was so funny, man. Um, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. It was really awesome. And like I said, dude, the first like the the first fifteen minutes, this is basically nothing but a bunch of lockups. I'm like, yeah. dude, what is this tag match gonna be? And I was and then it really picked up and I really ended up enjoying myself. Um, and I thought it was so fun. But dude, the rock stamina was absolutely the highlight of the night. Uh, well, I, unless you know your name is Sami Zayn or Gunther, but Thanks. other than that, dude, oh my god, this was so much fun. Or the moment where fucking Cody was given uh, Roman, you know, he was attempting, you know, the three Cody cutters, and he did the thing again where on the third one he goes up and puts his back against the fucking ropes like a dumbass. And you know, I thought, you know, if any, if it wasn't Solo coming up, it would have been Rock that you know comes up and hits him, but bro. We just hear a fucking smack, and Cody Rhodes just got fucking whipped in the back by the fucking weight belt, dude. Yeah. That shit was brutal as fuck, dude. That shit was awesome. Um, man. T Tony Khan just tweeted out two minutes ago, justified this is awesome chance for a collision. <laughs> <laughs> At fucking one o'clock in the morning. Look at this fucking guy, man. Uh, uh, Tony Khan. Gotta love him. Um, bro... Yeah, so Cody Cody gets whipped in the back, bro. They take Rock to the outside. Cody dismantles one announce table, and the fucking Rock just fucking stumbles over to the next one and starts on Dynamite. The Young's Bucks will be presenting footage from All In. You just can't let it go, dude. They're going to make some fucking joke. Oh, they have, God. you know, all footage, dude. If it, now, if it's the real footage, <gasps> I'll fucking love you guys. <laughs> but it's not going to be. And if it is, I'll give them that. They will cool. discuss it for the first time. Dude, it's going to be a joke, dude. I know it's going to be a Young Bucks joke. I mean, just, as long as it's funny. If it's funny, I'll be like, okay. Because at the end of the day, am I tired of them bringing it up? Yes. But when it is Young Bucks, they are fucking funny with the shit. They knew know how to joke about it. I'm just, just let it go, dude. Please, just let it go. It, it, as long... It needs to be something that doesn't pertain. Because, like, obviously people are going to think it's, like, CM Punk stuff. But it needs to be something that just doesn't... Pertain to that at all. Yeah. It's got to be just their own little thing. Just, like, a joke. Like, obviously it's, like, a joke in it. And that's what they do. Um, and that's what they do best. But, yeah. Um, I think that should be good. Hopefully, man. Hopefully good. it's good. So... The Rock just stumbles over to the Spanish announce table and starts dismantling that one, too. He goes to give Cody a rock bottom, and Cody Cody, Cody reverses it. And you could just see The Rock as he's got his arm over Cody. You could just see his back just going like this, like he's fucking breathing for his life. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets, he gets rock bottom through the, through the table. He gets rock bottom through the table, and... Um, Seth is over there, you know, marking out, trying to, or he's over there, he's trying to go over there, he's leaning on the barricade, because he's trying to go get Dwayne to get him in the ring and pin him, I'm assuming, and Roman comes running around the corner and spears Rollins through the barricade, that was an awesome sequence, that was great, that was an awesome sequence, they get Cody in the ring, man, they get Cody in the ring, and him and Roman are going at it for a little bit. And Roman ends up uh, catching a midair off a of Cody Cutter with a with a uh, sp with a spear or a Superman punch and a spear. The Rock gets in, hits him with a rock bottom and the people's elbow, and that was it. Thank God the the right sequence is taking place with the heels winning tonight. So although it's still possible, <laughs> it's not impossible still. It's more looks like, especially with the imaging they did after this match. Um, I'm going to throw that hopeful hat still in there 
said Kobe looks like he's winning tomorrow. He, he does. He really does. At this point, he really does. Especially with that imaging they did. They did the same camera angle of Kobe looking there all sad. Um, just without the rubber chicken this time. And, this you know, time he's laying on a bottle of Prime. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this means Cody's winning. Because that's at least what it looks like finally. Fucking 44 minutes, dude. Yes, this tag match went 44 minutes and 35 seconds in what was an absolute spectacle. Um, so... Cody, like Sir K says, is in the middle of the ring and he's doing the same spot from last year. But instead of just Roman Reigns behind him holding the titles up, it's Roman and The Rock holding, you know, Rock's holding his fucking glazing title up. And uh, Cody's, uh, Cody's hold, or uh, Roman's holding the WWE Championship up and Cody's sitting there in the middle of the ring and he's he's got his hands on his knees and he's just <laughs> fucking looking there just all fucking sad. Um, probably looking up to Dusty and doing whatever he's got to do. And, you know, he's looking all sad and stuff. And they, you know, ran the same thing as, as last year. And it really fucking looks like Cody's winning. Cody's winning tomorrow. Unless this is all a giant fucking swerve Ugh. and this man just loses again. But if that's the case... Good luck digging yourself out of that hole because yeah. it's now or never. Cody might as well find that fucking contract locked up in them files and just fucking set it ablaze yeah. because fucking hell, man. But I got a new sad Cody face for my Twitter <laughs> header. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Um, hopefully, it can change to a positive one tomorrow. Um, but, dude. He better fucking win, man. He needs to. <laughs> he better win. Oh, yeah. Cody, Cody's cooked at that point. You can't do anything like with him at that point at all. What are you going to do with Cody after that? Go, go have him fucking face Seth again? Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. But the tag match was awesome. Mm -hmm. The tag match was awesome. I liked it a lot. It uh, definitely was is going to be... Uh, one of the better matches of the weekend as mm -hmm. well. Um, it, it is amazing. Um, it, it is it is amazing. But dude, the way it's looking, yeah. as of Saturday, as of WrestleMania Saturday, it really looks like Cody could be finishing the story. Now, I thought he was going to finish the story last year, so obviously nothing's for sure, but... We're looking in a positive direction mm -hmm. right now. But that we'll just have to wait and see on because we got one more night. And boy, oh boy, is it going to be something. But yeah, um, the bottle of Prime in the middle of the ring didn't bother me at all. No, it looked fine tonight. Um, I think it definitely would look you know, a little funky if it was one of those like, colorful ones. But even then it wouldn't have been too bad. But I like what they did tonight, man. And I would like if they put more sponsors in the ring, man. I, I think I dig the look personally. I think it's a cool, like, sports-filled look and, um, in a good way, not in the AEW way. Um, and I actually, I kind of I kind of digged it, man. Low-key. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot, too. Um, but yeah, man. So, that is gonna do it for this edition of your WrestleMania Saturday, Night 1. Official show review, man. And... This was night one, man. It was pretty. It was pretty okay in the. Um, it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was great in the beginning. Great in the end. Really kind of boring in the middle. Um, so, hopefully, hopefully, man, we're on here and Cody Rhodes is the new world champion tomorrow. But we'll just have to wait and see. Tomorrow's the big one, man, and it's gonna be a very interesting night tomorrow night, and we're gonna. Have to see how everything goes. But with that, man, that is going to do it for this WrestleMania Saturday edition of the WrestleMania 40 official show review. And with that, that is going to do it, man. And it has been always, always nothing but a pleasure for my Johnny Mayhem. And I, Sir K. And that is going to do it for this edition of the Notorious Hills Podcast. Another great edition of the WrestleMania Night 1 official show review thank you guys so much for joining us please like comment and subscribe and we will see you guys tomorrow with the wrestlemania sunday 
official show review, man. We will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.